Hey everybody, welcome back. This video discusses another type of radiation interaction called Compton scatter. This is the most common but the least desirable photon interaction. It's important to understand Compton scattering because it negatively affects all three areas of concern, patient dose, occupational dose, and image quality. So here's what happens. The X-ray photon enters an atom in the body, and the X-ray photon energy is partially absorbed by a loosely bound outer shell electron. This results in the electron being knocked out of its orbit, which we call ionization. The electron is commonly called a Compton electron because it was created by Compton scattering. The rest of the photon energy immediately exits the atom as a scattered photon. It has less energy than the original photon, and it's going in a different direction. That's why we call it scatter. So with Compton scattering, it's a photon in with an electron and a scattered photon out. Pay attention to how Compton scattering is different from the other interactions. With photoelectric effect, this interaction takes place in an inner shell electron, and it results in only an ionized electron. There's no scattered photon. Coherent scattering is also different. This occurs when the incident photon interacts with the entire atom. The energy of the photon is temporarily absorbed and then released as a scattered photon. There's no ionization, there's no free electron, and no biological harm to the patient. Occupational dose from coherent scattering is also negligible. Once again, Compton scattering occurs when the incoming photon interacts with an outer shell electron. This energy is absorbed by the electron, which causes it to be knocked out of its orbit. At the same time, a scattered photon is also created. So what are the effects of Compton scattering? Remember the three areas that we should be concerned with. Patient dose, occupational dose, and image quality. Compton scattering affects all three areas, and none of these effects are good effects. We'll start by talking about patient dose. The effect of Compton scattering on patient dose is not good. Remember that Compton scattering does result in ionization. So this free electron that gets created crashes through the surrounding tissues and cells and results in biological damage in the body. The scattered photon can also be absorbed in the patient's tissues, which causes even more harm and more dose to the patient. All of this results in an increase in the patient's dose. Compton scattering also has a negative effect on occupational dose. The reason for this is because Compton scattering, according to its name, creates scatter. The scatter sometimes strikes the image receptor, but Compton scatter also strikes anyone standing in the examination room. In fact, Compton scattering is the number one source of occupational dose. This is because during any diagnostic imaging, the patient becomes a source of scattered radiation. Since photons created as a result of the Compton interaction process are emitted in all directions, they will expose the healthcare professional and anyone else in the examination room. Finally, Compton scattering also has a negative effect on the image. So why is that? Compton scattering, of course, creates scatter, which in turn decreases the image contrast. Remember this principle. The combination of photoelectric effect and transmission creates what would otherwise be a high contrast, high quality image, and what we mean by that is there's clearly visible differences in the shades of gray. Compton scattering and really any kind of scattering just adds meaningless noise to the image. When we add scatter, such as Compton scatter to the image, this results in an overall decrease in the image contrast. So when does Compton scattering occur? Remember this principle, more matter equals more scatter. For example, part thickness. With more matter in the way, more photons interact by Compton scattering. This is the main reason that larger patients, as in the example to the right, have more scatter and therefore lower image contrast. More Compton scatter is created in thicker patients. There's more matter, therefore more scatter. The same idea applies to part density or tissue density. This refers to the amount of matter packed into the space of the tissue. 
For example, the chest is mostly full of air, which is lower density, which means there's less matter and less scatter. The abdomen, though, is approximately the same thickness, but more dense. This means there's more matter, more scatter, and the overall image is going to be lower contrast. One more way we apply this principle is in regards to the field size or the amount of collimation. If we decrease the collimation or use a larger field size, there's more matter being exposed, therefore more scatter, and lower contrast. The opposite is true in regards to reducing scatter. If we increase the collimation or use a smaller field size, there's less matter being exposed, therefore less scatter and higher contrast. One more factor that influences the amount of Compton scatter taking place is the beam energy, which of course is controlled by the KVP. If we increase the KVP, this proportionally increases the amount of scatter reaching the image receptor and therefore decreases the total image contrast. The ideal situation would be to have as little scatter reaching the image receptor as possible. So how can we reduce the effects of Compton scatter? Consider these factors. We could decrease the part thickness. We do this by compressing the patient if possible. We could also use the smallest field size or the most collimation possible. And last of all, when we can, we would want to use a lower KVP. All of these factors together decrease the amount of Compton scatter taking place. Obviously, this is the ideal, but sometimes it isn't possible. Here's a summary of Compton scattering. Compton scattering occurs when the incoming photon interacts with a loosely bound outer shell electron. The electron is going to be immediately knocked out of its orbit. This process is called ionization, and the free electron is called the Compton electron. The remaining energy leaves the atom as a scattered photon, called the Compton photon. A few more principles to remember. Compton scattering occurs at all energy levels but it becomes the predominant or the main interaction at high energies. Compton scattering increases the patient dose because of ionization. It increases the occupational dose because scatter is being created. And finally, all Compton scattering decreases the image quality because it decreases image contrast. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to visit CloverLearning.com and explore our robust selection of video-based courses, certification exam prep question banks, and continuing education resources. Lastly, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on our latest videos.